This is Luffy from the anime One Piece, but in 3D. I will use this model to recreate four scenes from the original anime. The first scene is the easiest, but it gets harder and harder from there on out, up to the point where I don't even know if I can recreate the last scene. I even spoke with a professional anime compositor to learn more about the post-production stage that One Piece goes through to achieve its unique look like these uneven outlines. And even he said that the last scene would be impossible to recreate in 3D. Well. Let's find out. My goal is to master the art of 3D anime. Let's see if I can recreate One Piece. Starting with a simple cube. At first, all that matters is to get the most basic proportions right. And in case you didn't know, Luffy doesn't look like a realistic human. So having the references in the background to capture his appearance is pretty important. Especially for the head since it's so stylized. For now I'll only focus on the front and side view since those are the angles that show the shape of his head the best. Any other angle can cause big problems in the future, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. Now all that's left is to refine it a bit by merging all the pieces together and sculpting the individual muscles. And look at that, that's how you can create his body. But, of course, it's obviously not done yet. There are three steps left to finish the 3D model. First, let's make the model actually look 2D by limiting the lighting to a single highlight and shadow color, just like the typical anime cell shading. The second thing missing is the hair which was probably the weirdest thing I've modeled in a long time. The biggest problem with hair is that it can change its overall shape very easily, which is something that is pretty hard to do in 3D. Even just looking at these references, you can see how none of these are exactly the same. So I decided to just use one of these as my reference and try to recreate that as good as possible. But that meant I had a front view, but no side view. I can position the strands on two axes, but not on the third. So I decided to just place each one somewhere around the head and connect them afterwards by filling the gaps between them. And the end result looks good enough, I would say. Which means that there's only one thing left to finish the 3D model. And it's probably pretty obvious what it is. And with that, the 3D model is done. But it doesn't really look that great yet. With a couple more changes though, it looks a lot better. These changes are not really part of the basic 3D model, but rather modifications to make it look more 2D. And let's explore what those are while creating our four shots. Starting with the simplest one. It's pretty static and doesn't include the face, which is usually the hardest part to remake in 3D. I overlaid the original shot over my camera and then tried to match the pose with my model as closely as possible. But very quickly it's obvious that you can't really recreate the pose by just bringing the limbs into the same position. Which is why it was so important that the skeleton for Luffy can not only put him into all kinds of poses, but even go beyond that and stretch his limbs to be even longer than normal. Only through basically overstretching the model was I actually able to recreate the original pose. When you're drawing, you don't really have to think about perfect proportions and just draw it how it looks the best. So even though the 3D model's proportions are more accurate, it still looks worse and you basically have to break it to achieve the best looking results. And this breaking of the 3D rules is one of the main things you do to make it look more 2D. You'll see many more techniques like this one in the other scenes. But we're not done with this one yet. After stretching him out a bit, um, after extending his limbs, it already looks much better. But a few things are still missing. First of all, we have his shirt that is waving in the wind. Creating good cloth movement can be pretty hard, but luckily these were actually pretty easy to make. I can use a wave texture and let that run along the edge of the cloth. This wave texture can then displace the geometry of that cloth to create the general wave pattern. Afterwards, I can just apply the same displacement again to make it rounder. If I now apply that to a shirt, it looks like this. And I think that comes pretty close to the original. But even with all these improvements, we haven't even talked about the one that makes the biggest difference. And all we have to do is add a grease pencil object to the scene. The grease pencil allows you to draw anywhere in the 3D scene. It also has a line art modifier. 
I don't think I have to explain what it does. <laughs> but there's more. You can also freeze and adjust these lines in case you want to remove some or add more details, for example. Look how much better it looks after adding these lines. Now we're almost done with the scene. There's only one more thing left to do. With this thing, we can not only fix the weird shading on his body, but also add these extra detail lines and his hair, since the hair we have is white and doesn't really work for this scene. What can do all these things? It is once again the grease pencil. Not only can we use it for the line art, but also to basically draw over the 3D scene to fix anything that is broken on the 3D model. And we can do that by placing it in front of the 3D scene from the camera's perspective. Now anything that still looks a bit weird can be fixed and very dynamic elements like the hair or the energy surrounding Luffy can be added by just drawing them. And it looks pretty good. But this is just the beginning. We'll have to break this model more and more as we go through these scenes up to... Uh, you'll see when we get there. One Piece often has a very big and exaggerated expressions. Even though the skeleton itself is not able to do that, we can create them in a different way. First, we can bring the model and camera into the correct position to match the original. Then we can adjust the face to match the reference. Afterwards, we realize that we just wasted an hour because we need more than just one expression. So we ask ourselves if there's a way to make these adjustments optional so we can create multiple and turn them on or off with a single value slider. And look at that, we can do that with shape keys. But for these new expressions, we also need a new set of teeth since the one I already made before doesn't really work here. The nice part about this art style is that stuff like the teeth are so simplified that it makes 3D modeling those much easier as well. But the teeth being so simple also created an issue. I could create individual teeth, but that can look weird from certain angles. There's actually a technique that I discovered during my Deadpool anime project that can add lines like these anywhere on the body super easily. There are a couple of extra options for the grease pencil line art modifier for what it should detect as lines. One of those options is this one. With this enabled, it can not only detect the edges of a mesh like the teeth, but also individual edges. Which means that I can place these single edges anywhere on the body and they get turned into lines. This way I can not only add the lines on the teeth, but also the scratches on his face. The main issue now is getting the lighting to look like the original, which in this case might not even possible. In 2D you can just draw highlights on his nose like that, but that isn't really possible in 3D without the rest looking weird, since 3D lines still behave somewhat physically accurate. There are ways to change how a model reacts to lighting to stylize it more, but those are very tedious to set up in my opinion. In this case, there was something much easier I could use. The basic material for each object has a highlight and a shadow color. Now to add custom lighting to the scene, I can just create two more materials. One for only highlights and one for only shadows. And I can use them just like the edge lines by placing geometry on top of the original model. With this, I can create shadows and highlights wherever I want and don't have to care about the lighting at all. This worked so well that I had to fix almost nothing with the grease pencil. These first two scenes were a great way to test out the general workflow for this project. And since these two worked out so well, I thought now it's time to push this model to the extreme. This whole scene from the anime is pretty crazy, but this shot right here especially was the one I wanted to recreate for this project. There are a couple of things that make this shot much harder than the first two and I wasn't really sure how I would solve these issues. The first one are the general shapes. The lines and shapes are much more sketchy and look like they've been drawn freestyle, where the first two scenes are much more straight and organized. The second thing is the pose. The first two are somewhat distorted and stretched, but this one takes that to another level. Lastly, the compositing. The chromatic aberration at the edges, the glowing eyes, the iris in the background, everything is just a bit more extreme here. So let's see if I can recreate it. At this point I gave up trying to match the pose without stretching the model. The new strategy was to match the most important body parts as closely as possible. Like his fist, head and legs. The rest then gets stretched to look as much like the original as possible. And as long as you don't leave the camera's perspective, it looks pretty good. 
The only problem that this stretching creates is that the limbs get much thinner. But that's where we can use shape keys again to adjust their shape. Speaking of adjusting shapes, while we're already at it, might as well see if shape keys can also turn this rather clean mesh into these more sketchy shapes. The pants, for example, are much bumpier, so if we apply the same to the model, it matches the original pretty well. The hand is also much more defined. There wasn't that much geometry to play with for the hands, but despite that, I think it comes pretty close to the original. Lastly again, the face. After the last scene, I knew that this expression was possible, so now I just had to create it again. Now for the last point. I learned a lot about anime compositing by talking with Pilo, who works as a professional in this field. The first thing that surprised me is that he said that they usually get the entire footage in one layer. In my project, I can render my scene in multiple layers, like the line art and the colors, so I can have more control over each one. But since it's common to only get a single layer, they use two custom tools. To first select the line art and move it to its own layer, and the second one to fill the line art with the fill color to get a layer that has only the colors. Another question I had for ages was how One Piece creates these lines that vary in thickness. I always thought drawing them like that manually would take way too long, so there had to be a way to do this during the composition stage. And apparently the way they create these lines is in fact in compositing with the roughen edges effect in After Effects. For anime compositing in general, After Effects is the most common tool. But since I used DaVinci Resolve, I didn't want to buy another editing software, so I tried to recreate those effects. The only one I really needed to recreate was the rough and edges effect, which actually wasn't that hard to do. It doesn't look exactly like the original, but I think if I spend a bit more time on this, I can get it there. After a couple more glow effects and the chromatic aberration, this is the final shot. Now for the finale, the shot that Pilo said would be impossible to recreate in 3D. Just like the last one, this shot also takes the look from the first two and pushes it to the extreme. But that's not really the reason why Pilo said that this shot would be impossible to recreate in 3D. It would be impossible because of how it's been animated. Just like the last shot, this one is drawn in a much more freestyle way than most of the other scenes in the anime. This style makes the body look like it's warping constantly. Look at the stomach for example. The abs look like one of those baking time lapses. <laughs> Doing that in 3D, which loves consistency, would be impossible. Maybe. I didn't want to give up that easily, so I tried it anyway. But for now, only as a still frame. And here is why. In theory, you can create any shot as long as you can create each frame of it. The question would then be how much more time consuming it is compared to just drawing it. Since I wasn't sure if I can create the shot at all, I decided to attempt a single frame first. And I felt pretty bad for my 3D model. To match the face at all, I had to do some huge adjustments with the shape keys, which from any other angle looks very um, interesting. But as long as the camera perspective looks fine, it's okay. The other major part of this process were the 2D adjustments over the 3D model. I could have also created the shading with the geometry, like in shot 2, but decided to draw them instead. In the end, the shot looks like this. So in theory, the shot is possible. Now, my question to you is, would you want to see me attempt to recreate the whole animated version of this shot in another video? Maybe even both of these shots? Let me know in the comments and if enough people vote yes, I will try to recreate the impossible shot. I still have some techniques I've never used before, so maybe for this scene, it's finally time to use them.